Steve, so nice to have you here on Lifeograph TV. Um, you're a VC at Ben Rock. Um, we would like to share with our um, audience what are some of uh, the industries that Ben Rock is interested in. Well, uh, one of the exciting things about Ben Rock is we don't, we actually don't uh, segment on on sectors. We invest across all technology companies, everything from healthcare to consumer, uh, social networking, uh, you know, core technology, um, financial tech, ad tech. Basically, we're looking for good businesses and, and good opportunities to make money for our investors. Excellent. When you say good businesses, give us uh, some examples of companies that you've invested in. Well, over the years, well, Venrock originally uh, was a family office from the Rockefeller family uh, during uh, literally from 1969 on, so that the firm is uh, you know, 45, year, 45 plus years old. And uh, early investments were uh, in Intel and Apple, uh, Stratacom, um, a lot of, uh, uh, there's been a lot of healthcare investments. Uh, uh, we were in Nest, uh, a, recent, uh, a recent big name didn't go public, was bought by Google. Uh, good enough for a billion dollar uh, over. It was, it was a good exit. Um, yeah, so we've, we've been, I would say, uh, you know, had successes across many sectors and, uh, you know, just uh, uh, continue to be on the lookout for the next, you know, the next big one, just uh, like our other colleagues in, the, in this industry. Well, it's a very well-respected uh, VC firm. Uh, what is the size of the checks that you write, the series that you invest in? Well, um, the, uh, the funds are, uh, over the years, we're in our seventh fund. And the funds have been on the order of five hundred million dollars, and so in order to get enough diversification in the in the funds, you you want to invest in twenty or thirty companies in order to get you know to get that balance and not have any overweight in any one company. So the checks, the the total dollars invested in any in any one company turn out to be around twenty million dollars over the life of the company. So we tend to write sort of up to about half of that, ten million dollars plus or minus in a first check. Uh, depending on the size of the company and the company's needs, and then keep the rest in reserve for follow-on financings. And uh, if a if a founder is looking for um, you know to fundraise, and they come to uh, Van Rock to pitch, you know what would be some tips that you would give them? Well, I, I uh, well I guess there's really two questions embedded in there. One to pitch, which is a very specific question, and two is just to raise money in general. But I would say above all. You know, just be yourself. Um, we're we're a very we, we, we have a very long term investment view. It's not quite like getting married, but close. In other words, it's once you have an investor in the in the venture industry, you have an investor for a long time. And if you're trying to build big businesses, it could take five, seven, ten plus years uh, before an exit, before there's a public offering or an M and A or some other exit. And so, you're. Uh, you're together for a very long time, so you know what I would say is it needs to be a win-win. And it, and if you, if one thinks that well maybe I could you know just try real hard and get them to invest even if you thought it wasn't the right partnership, over time it probably wouldn't be good for either side. So anyway, we just basically ask for you to be yourselves, and and we try very hard to be very direct and open about what works for us and what doesn't, and if it does. You know, then we're together for a long time. I know, and uh, it takes about ten years to become an overnight success, right? It, yes, that's correct. <laughs> that is absolutely correct. Um, so, how about you? Like, what is uh, your particular interest in? What industry? What kind of companies? Well, I'm I'm kind of the science guy there at Benrock. I'm not now the healthcare guys are science guys too, but that's sort of that's one half of the of the shop. I'm I'm very much the I, I, in my own uh, technical background and, and academic background was in wireless and uh, embedded systems and communications, but I've kind of broadened and now I kind of look at the things where there's uh, 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 signal processing or data processing, where there's a com combination of hardware and software. So I look at the satellite industry, the drone industry, the robots, the internet of things, which we hear a lot about. Um, I care. I cover some of the older companies, the semiconductor and wireless companies. So basically, those areas where there's a fair amount of capital investment to actually do a lot of research. I wouldn't say research, but a lot of sort of hardcore development, as opposed to 
more of a marketing focused company like some consumer application for your cell phone where or where websites where the technology is sort of a given and it's really a question is can you build a brand um, in, in, in the companies that I look at, you still need to build a brand, but there's this extra component where you actually have to build something physical, and and you have to uh, make sure that it does what you you know what what the companies promote that it does. Uh, you mentioned uh, your background, uh, you know, technical background, academic background. Uh, how did you decide to become a VC? Well, it, that's actually a very easy answer. It's a very easy story. I was a portfolio CEO for Benrock from in the early two thousands. So they got to know me from the other side of the table. And then when that trend, I transitioned from CEO of that company to being an entrepreneur in residence where I kind of hung out and helped them with deals and thought about what companies should be invested in. And uh, then went out and did a couple of more CEO uh, uh, gigs, I would say. And uh, about six years ago, I got a call from Benrock. They needed someone to kind of help out in the science area and the timing was just right. And so I had a job, uh, but I, the, the company I was working for was very kind and I found my replacement and eased into the Venrock job. So I, I, um, I got the opportunity through a long relationship with the firm. And it's always good to have that background, right? You well, relate that's, what, that's why I was hired because I actually, you know, they knew me very, very well, which I think is 51% of it. And secondly, you know, I, I actually, I'm kind of a closet academic. I'm a, I, I enjoy the quick, quick study, come up to speed quickly on technologies that you may not have actually knew, known about in the past. So a lot of venture capitalists to come up to speed very quickly, whether it's science or not. You need to learn a lot in a very short time to make a very big decision. That's right. And um, this is a question that we ask all our guests on Lifeograph TV, and that is, um, Give us uh, three things that people don't know about you. Well, I don't know if I have three. Okay, give us a I, I actually, actually don't have too many secrets because I put stuff on my LinkedIn page and my resume, but I think you knew this, that uh, uh, well, I was a competitive figure skater for 20 years. I said that. And so I, um, I loved that for a really long time. And, and at the point, I couldn't jump anymore. I skated pairs. I had a partner. I was about five feet tall. I'm not a big guy, so 100, 100 pounds is about it lifted her over my head and threw her and did all that stuff and uh, we did uh, we, we won the US National Paris Championship in Lake Placid uh, in 1996 so that was a big thing for me and then when I couldn't skate anymore I became a, a, a college soccer referee which is what I do now so that's also made it feels like it, I, I feel like a kid so it keeps me young just to be a uh, uh, running after the college kids, you know, so it's good for me. So that's <laughs> only two things. Good. But that keep those keep me pretty busy <laughs> along with my day job. Good. Well, that was two. How about one more? I don't know. One more. What else? Do, what else? Interesting. Oh, I get that. Maybe a fun thing. I I, uh, I have a lot of different stories, but I, I suppose this is a good one. That uh, when I graduated from undergraduate school in St. Louis, Missouri, at Washington University. I actually um, was offered a job to be a field agent with the CIA, oh. and I you be, gotta be I, I would tell everyone out there to be careful what you wish for. They they were recruiting on campus. I went through the interviews after six months of all the psychological testing and the flights to Washington and all the discussions. I said they said what do you want to do? And I said well you know that guy in Mission Impossible who does all the wireless stuff and hooks up the radios for the field agents. I want to be him. Well. They said okay, and then they told me what that entailed, and this was during the Cold War. This was a few decades ago, so this was, you know, uh, um, no one could know except maybe my parents, and I'd have a cover identity, and, uh, you know, if I ever wanted to leave, they'd have to make up a resume for me, and, I'd, and they asked me how I felt about killing and would I be able to deal with things, and they were going to send me to language school at Monterey, where they have the big, uh, uh, you know, international, uh, the big yeah. international language school. Yeah. Well, I lasted three days. I went home, lied to all my friends. They gave me a cover story because they asked me how many people did I tell. I said, are you kidding? I told everyone. I was so excited. <laughs> I was going to get a job at the CIA. So anyway, I came home and lied to all my friends. I lasted three days. It just wasn't me. 
So I turned the job down and that was that. So how's that for three weeks? <laughs> that is that, that, very, it, very it, most interesting story. It was, a, sure. it was an interesting story. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful. Yeah. So your name is Steve Goldberg. It is me. And you're a VC of that, that, that oh, is okay. me. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I still get, my friends still ask me that. Yeah, it was a pretty funny <laughs> thing. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Steve. We appreciate you're it. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you.